Finally, I can tell you about and even show you the brand new 4K waterproof action camera from DJI, introducing the Osmo Action. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and yes, the Osmo Action has finally been announced. We actually received this little thing back in March and we've been playing with it ever since so that we can bring you this really early review. Now, as you all know, the brilliant Osmo Pocket came out last year and I absolutely love this little device. You might remember in my early reviews, I was really confused about why reviewers kept comparing it to the GoPro Hero range. Well, it's a completely different device, as I said at the time. While the Osmo Pocket is designed for cinematic, beautiful shots, which are perfectly stabilized, it's not designed for rugged action sports. That's where the Osmo Action comes in to compare heat with GoPro and aimed at more of the rough and rugged throwing around type sports, mounting this thing wherever you want to mount it. So I know you're really keen to get a closer look at the Osmo Action, so without further ado, let's take a look at it now. So introducing the brand new DJI Osmo Action. And I've been wanting to tell you guys about this for a long time. Now I've had this so early that I haven't even got a box or an instruction manual for it. It's that new and fresh. So literally I'm probably very lucky to have been one of the very first to see this beautiful brand new little product. So first of all, I'm just gonna take the protective stickers off the front and back of it. And let's give you, first of all, the highlights about this brand new product. So first of all, this is the Osmo Action. It's also known as the AC101. And just to give a comparison really with its biggest competitor, the GoPro Hero 7 Black, let's go through some of those statistics. So first of all, they've both got a half inch CMOS sensor, which is gonna give you 12 megapixel camera photos and video. They both support eight times slow motion, and they're both gonna give you 4K at 60 frames per second. They both shoot raw. And in terms of the size as well, they are both roughly a about the same size, although the Osmo Action is slightly longer and a little bit thicker, but the GoPro is actually a little bit taller. Last of all there, they both have a removable battery as well, which is really good because it means you're not gonna be stuck when you're out and about and you're wanting to film more things. And see the battery just pops out like that. So next, what makes the Osmo Action better than the GoPro Hero 7 Black? If you were looking to buy one or the other, well, first of all, this camera has a beautiful 2.25 full color touchscreen on the back. And when you're out and about with these action cameras, I've always hated just how tiny the rear cameras are on the GoPro series. They don't really let you see the footage clear enough to know whether it's any good. So having that big display there is lovely. The resolution of this screen is 640 by 360 versus the two inch smaller screen on the Hero 7 Black, which is only 480 by 320. Now onto the other lovely feature of this one. It's got a front screen as the Hero 7 Black does, but this one is color. Plus it's also 1.4 inches versus the one inch of the Hero 7 Black. If you are running around doing selfie videos, having a color screen on the front is much more valuable than a black and white screen. You're gonna get a much better representation of how your end footage is gonna look like. Now, just like when the Mavic Air was released, it upped the bit rate to 100 megabits per second for video footage and the Osmo Act is no exception. It captures 100 megabits per second at 4K versus the 78 megabits per second of the Hero 7 Black. You can take the Osmo Action underwater down to an impressive 12 meters just like this without any protective case. The Hero 7 will only go down to its rated 10 meters. However, it's worth noting that both of them do have the option of a waterproof housing where you can then take them both down to 60 meters. We mentioned the battery earlier. Well, the Osmo Action has a 1300 milliamp battery instead of the 1220 milliamps of the Hero 7 Black. But the biggest point of all is that this Osmo Action will only cost apparently around $299 versus $399 of the Hero 7 Black. So you're saving $100 with this camera. And in my opinion, from what I've just read out, this has a much better specification. 
Now, as with any new product that's released, where it's better, it will also perhaps have some weaknesses. And in terms of this, compared to the Hero 7 Black, it has no GPS, but I have to comment, I can't think of any occasion where I've wanted a GPS on an action camera. At the moment, it has no live streaming support, so we're not able to stream live to Facebook or YouTube, but I'm fairly sure that as the app evolves, those features will be added as well. The Osmo Action has two microphones, the Hero 7 Black has three, so you've got one less microphone there, but as part of our testing, we will be testing the audio as well. And finally, this has no night photo mode, but again, I think that's probably something that they will be able to add via the app at a later stage. And finally, in terms of weight, the Hero 7 Black is quoted to be 116 grams with battery. The Osmo Action with the battery fitted comes in slightly heavier at 125 grams, but that difference is minimal considering that you are getting a really nice camera here with some additional functionality. And I must say on that, the build quality of the Osmo Action is absolutely lovely. This feels like a very premium device. Now, while the Osmo Pocket also felt very, very well built, it is clearly much more of a fragile device and it's not designed for action sports or being thrown around. And that's why I was very surprised why the early reviews of the Pocket kept comparing it to the Hero 7 Black. DJI clearly know that cameras such as the Osmo Pocket are just not really designed for action and being thrown around because of these delicate gimbals. And that's why they've now introduced the Osmo Action. So sent to me in this bundle with the Osmo Action were a set of ND filters, and I've got ND filters here from ND4 up to ND32. I've also got this housing here, which you will recognize has the GoPro mounting on the bottom. And that's handy because it means essentially this camera will mount wherever you've mounted a GoPro in the past. And also in terms of mounting, they've not copied the actual uh, mounting mechanism itself, they have obviously used the same GoPro bracket style here. However, they have this intricate, clever little mounting design, which I prefer. I've never liked the GoPro slide mounts that you slide these onto. This one instead secures down onto a mounting surface and then you simply rotate it to lock it into place. So that's really nice as well. Again, you just simply dock it down, rotate it, and that then locks into place. As you know, on the market, there are tons of mounting options with GoPro devices, and therefore anything you currently have a GoPro mount attached onto today will work with this new mount together with the Osmo Action. So unlike the lens of the GoPro Hero 7, which does sort of unlock by rotating it and then pulling off, the lens on this is simply screw on. So you simply unscrew the clear lens that comes with it, and you can now attach one of your ND filter lenses very easily and very simply like that. So changing lenses is very quick and easy. And obviously, again, with third-party accessories, no doubt there'll be lots of other options to attach onto this, probably including further wide-angle lenses and similar. Also, just whilst we're talking about that camera as well, the FOV is five degrees less than the Hero 7 Black, but there are different FOV options on this camera, as we'll see. Now, I don't know the pricing of these additional accessories. Maybe they'll come with it. I don't know at this time. It's very early, and so we'll have to obviously look for the announcement, which you'll probably have already seen if you're now watching this video. So anyway, without further ado, now let's take a look at the menu system when we turn it on. So just before we start, I'll introduce the buttons around the Osmo Action first. On the top, we've got a power button here, which is obviously for turning it on and off. You can also turn the display on and off as well when you're not using the display by simply single pressing on that button. We then got our shutter button on the right here for starting and stopping video and also of course taking photos. Looking at the side, we've got a button here which helps to release the battery whereby you slide this one first and then you slide that one on top and then the battery pops out very easily. Just on the side here, if we push this button down, that slides open and now we've got our USB-C port and also our SD card slot in there. Close that back down and you'll notice a button here that says QS and that I believe stands for quick shortcut or something like that. You can basically assign any action that you want to this button so that when you press it, you can toggle between the most commonly used features or modes that you prefer. So to power it on, you simply press and hold the button on top like that. 
very, very quick start-up time and the camera is ready in a matter of seconds. Now, the first thing you'll see when you get this camera is this activation message. It does mean that you can't record until you've activated the camera. Now, unlike the Osmo Pocket, this camera has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And so all you do is connect your phone to it immediately, fire up the Mimo app, and that activates it within seconds. So not a big issue. So the QS button is really handy. Pressing it once will bring up a quick switch menu, but also if you press and hold it, you'll hear a little sound effect and look, now our front screen is enabled. So by pressing that button, you basically flick between the two displays and this front screen is absolutely lovely. It's full color. If you compare the size of it to the Osmo Pocket, just as an example, you can see how much bigger it is. And there were lots of complaints with Pocket owners that this screen was too small for using selfie. Well, I prefer the bigger screen of this, but I appreciate as well that the Osmo Pocket is designed to be portable. Putting a bigger screen on it would make the device bigger. So no problem there for me. It's worth noting that this screen has no touch on it. Unfortunately, that would be asking a bit too much. It is just the back screen that's touch sensitive, but still, if you're doing selfie, lovely to be able to see that screen there. So let's have a quick look at the menu features. So we're gonna switch the screen back by pressing and holding that QS button. The back screen will now come back to life. And again, it's very similar to the pocket interface whereby by swiping in certain directions, you'll get different options. So if we swipe from the left, first of all, that takes us to our media library to view footage that we've already recorded. Swipe from the top, and that's where you get all of your main settings. So you've got connect there for connecting to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Quick switch is to configure our button on the left-hand side. Custom is custom modes and settings, obviously loads of things in there. Pro mode is a little bit like pro mode on the Osmo Pocket where you can define ISO and other settings. Auto is the rotation, so if you rotate the camera around, it will automatically switch things around for you, including the navigation system. The full option there seems to relate to how much the image fills the screen when you're looking at it. So you might have noticed when we looked at our front-facing camera, we only had um, the aspect ratio respected and this top and bottom elements were just bars. I think that if we set the full option, then we might have a full frame on there. So let's have a look and we'll switch back. The interface is very easy to navigate on here. There you go, so you see now the full screen is used instead. So again, for selfie purposes, you end up with a lovely way of viewing what your end footage is gonna look like. This is so easy to navigate. You've got voice control as well on and off, but I've got no instruction manual at the moment because it's not been written yet. So I'm not quite sure what commands we can give to it. We've then got lock as well, which is to lock the screen. So if you're doing something, um, perhaps you're doing an activity where the screen might get touched, that's to stop the settings from being altered. Then you've got brightness, it's on 100% at the moment. Volume, it's only on 50, we can slide that up. And then metering is also for your exposure. So you can change it to spot metering. You can press and hold to enter metering mode. Nice, oh, that's another shortcut then. So this is a little bit like the Osmo Pocket where you've got the little yellow box um, which will set the exposure. And you can see I can now press anywhere on the screen and it sets the exposure accordingly. So that's what we've got in settings. If we now swipe across from the right, bear in mind that we're in video mode at the moment, we can change our FOV options. So we've got uh, wide or medium. So only two options, but I think they might vary depending on which resolution we're in. You've also then got video formats, MOV or MP4. But of course, these side options, the quick settings here, are gonna be different depending on which uh, video mode or photo mode you're in. If we slide up from the bottom, we get our video settings. So we're in video mode at the moment. This is where we set which resolution and frame rate we want to use. So interestingly, if we have 4K 4x3 at 30 frames a second, EIS is not supported. So remember, EIS is electronic image stabilization. Essentially, that's our hyper smooth that we have on the Hero 7. If we drop it down to 4K 30 frames a second, 48, 50, and 60, then we have got EIS supported. So the very highest resolution of 4K 4x3 aspect ratio doesn't support EIS, but to be honest, that's quite an unusual resolution. I don't think many people are gonna be using that. Most common is gonna be 4K 
at 60 frames. So you'll notice we've got EIS enabled there. If I drop this down now, we point the camera forward, you'll notice that if I wiggle the camera around, the image is staying nice and static there. And that's because the EIS is doing its thing. But if we just drop the EIS setting off and do the same again, you'll notice now we are seeing more of a kind of traditional action camera view. So EIS is doing really nicely there, considering that, again, this is electronic. There's no actual mechanical gimbal on this. So if we want to change mode now, out of video mode, we simply press our quick settings button on the left, and now we can slide between our modes. So we've got slow motion, we've got time lapse, and we've also got photo. Let's have a quick look at slow motion. In terms of resolution for slow motion, you've got 1080p at four or eight. You've also got the option of 720p for slow motion there as well. Press quick settings again. Let's have a look at time lapse. Now, everybody will be very pleased to see that you can actually set the time lapse as low as half a second here. The pocket has a limitation, I think, of two or three seconds as its minimum. And some people have just been asking on one of my videos, I wish the pocket would go lower. So that's great. Goes all the way up to, wow, 60 seconds. There you go. You've also got a drop down here, which is nice. You can take them at 4K as well. That's great. The Osmo Pocket only captures time lapse at 1080p so that's a really nice bonus one other thing to note as well in time lapse if we swipe to the right you can choose whether it records the jpegs and the videos or just the videos and then finally let's have a look at photo and swipe up we've got lots of options here again six by nine or four by three and also a countdown so that before the photo is taken you get a nice countdown to give you time to run over and get into position swiping from the right we've got jpeg format raw which is lovely or jpeg and raw so that's going to be definitely favorited by lots of you professional photographers out there so just another note about quick switch when we're in there you'll notice the little buttons top right hand corner if we press on one of those you can now change the order of the quick switch options and you can even remove some so i've actually removed some options here to make um, options that i will never use disappear so i had disabled hdr video for example which i can now enable by just simply ticking that now in my quick switch i'll have the option for hdr video and there it is so HDR video is a very interesting one. Again, sliding over from the right, we get FOV options as well as the file format. Swiping up from the bottom, we've got 4K 16 by nine at 30 frames a second. So it'd be very interesting to see how, just how nice and how different HDR video looks to regular video from this camera. Just finally as well, regardless of which quick switch mode you're in, you can always press on the button bottom left here in the screen and that will take you to some quick options as well where you can toggle between the modes in each key mode. So here we've got AEB photos, burst photos and timed, plus custom as well where you can create your own custom mode if you wish. So that's a really good detailed look at the Osmo Action. First of all as well, just to add, sorry about the state of my hands and my fingers, I've been building a wall this week in my garden. So my hands are a little bit destroyed. But anyway, just as another little comparison, here's my old Hero 4 camera, the two of them side by side. I know that the Hero series haven't really changed dramatically in terms of size over the years, but that's just to give a little comparison as well. You see what I mean about the Osmo Action being slightly longer there. Anyway, very excited to get this out and tested. So without further ado, let's go out and put it through its paces next. Enjoyed this video? Then hit thumbs up and subscribe now to say thanks and also to avoid missing out on future exclusive reviews from Droning On. Part two is coming right up where we'll be flying to Norway to put the new DJI Osmo Action through its paces in our full and comprehensive test review. In the meantime, comment below and let us know what you think about this brand new product. Links to it, by the way, are in the video description.